if you wanted to characterize the gradient between light and dark scales and modes, you'd have a pretty cool way of talking about a, a universal concept, which is that there are two poles, one's major, one's minor, so that's a dualism. There are lots of dualisms in life, and then you might ask yourself, well, how do I deconstruct that dualism? And actually, I don't know. But if you place that dualism onto the spectrum, the major scale exists over to the right, you might say, and the only thing past it is a Lydian scale. The minor scale is a little bit further to the left, and then there are several darker modes past that. So for some reason, the two scales that we make use of is shifted slightly toward the positive end. In the same way, in the Eastern traditions, we say there are these dualities, but the positive is the more powerful. The positive is the one that wins out, basically. Um, and it just has to be so that the world can, can go, <laughs> you might say. Um, and this, this is the kind of thing we make reference to in, in divinity. And now the trouble is everything I just described is just a kind of a happenstance deal, you know, within it's contained within the Western tradition. So is there really any connection between those two things? No. Is there any tangible aesthetic theory that actually informs practice and consumption of music? No. But it is nice to think about in the same way that Schopenhauer's explanation of the four voices in music um, represent different roles in, in the physical scheme. You know, the bass being the earth, the tenor being plant life, altos being animals, and sopranos being humans. And these, you know, we go from that underground sense up to the forms of reason all the way through the articulations of, of matter um, to organize life. And does that have anything to do with music? No. But it is a cool, deep structure thing to think about, and it is rather poetic, and I like it.